And you're listening to Stage Little Opening this evening at the Old Fitzroy Theatre. The Late Show, starting at 10pm, is Resplendence by Angus Serini. You might know him by from uh, his play The Bleeding Tree, which is returning next year to Sydney Theatre Company. But this is one of his other plays, and we have the director in the studio, Nathan Lovejoy, to have a chat about the production. Hey, welcome to Stage, it's Nathan. Thank you for having me, Regina. Thanks and for coming Rod. in. Thank you. Right. Yes. So... How did you come across this play? This uh, was... I'm working on this with a very dear friend of mine, James O'Connell, who's the actor in the piece. Mm -hmm. And I've known James uh, since we were 17 years old in suburban Melbourne. Uh, We did amateur musicals together, so we've been friends for a very, very, very long time. Oh, you're not that old. Uh, (laughs) I'm I'm getting there. 35... uh, What am I? 35 on Friday. Um, Happy happy birthday. birthday. Thank you so much. Um, But We do everything here at 2SCR. We we will sing later on. No, anyway, go ahead. That's the main reason I... I came in just to get a, a happy birthday from you on guys. Air. But but James uh, studied at VCA a little after I went to drama school, and he uh, was living in Melbourne a couple of years ago. And this was first performed as part of the Neon Festival at the Melbourne Theatre Company in 2014, which was oh. really kind of like a, a testing ground, if you like, for I suppose pieces that are maybe a little left of centre or pushing the kind of boundaries theatrically. I guess. Uh-huh. Um, uh, I guess, and when I say that. Uh, looking at it through the lens of a Melbourne Theatre Company audience, I suppose. And so James saw the show down there in 2014. I said this morning in another interview, I was like, and James fell in love with it. And he was like, well, I don't know if I fell in love with it. Oh, but, okay. but he, but I say that because it is a really, it, it's a it's a challenging piece and a really mm. sort of deeply kind of theatrical and, and poetic piece. And so he came to me because we, obviously we're still friends and he mentioned it uh, last year and said, what if we tried to chuck this on? And uh, we have. Uh-huh. <laughs> but, but this is... Oh, so t- give us the little kind of... Give you the spiel about yeah, the piece. Yeah, before it's we a, get into it's it. A, it's essentially a play, uh, to me, that I think is really dealing with sort of unmet desires and dreams, whether kind of personally, like when we think about our own lives and we look back and go, oh, geez, I wish I had done that oh, yeah. differently or yeah. I didn't do this thing, but also more broadly um, as well. But in a literal sense, at the core of the play is this man who feels like he hasn't realised his full potential. So he's living on his own, he's broke, he has no family, he wants to be a, a better kind of person, but he has a hard time reconciling his emotions. You know, mm. He's got a lot of anger and he's mm. sort of on the precipice of giving up. So in that respect, it's not the kind of story that we haven't seen before, you know, yeah. angry man who's really struggling to deal with the pressures of life. Yeah. And in the course of the narrative, he witnesses this uh, car accident. This girl gets hit by a car and he tries to pull her from this burning wreck. And I think as an audience, we see that and go, oh, I know where this is going. This this girl is going to be his, his redemption mm. or his saviour. But that doesn't happen. Okay. Uh, he just ends up Oh, right. Don't get, don't get too much hope. Yeah, about that. something out of the bag. Yeah, yeah. but I on top, oh, you did that on purpose. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> but on top of all that, so essentially, he, he, he you know, that we think in a story, our expectation mm. is, well, he's going to learn something. Yeah. It's going to be a journey. Yeah. So, it's kind of a hard reset back to the start. So that's literally what happens. But on top of that, we, and I think this is implicit in the text a little bit as well, although I haven't asked Angus this, but this is what we've done with it, is we've played with the idea that this guy is on a constant loop. So every night he's Mm. going through the same experience over and over and over. And like any good person who's stuck in a loop, he is sort of has a sense at times that that's what's happening to him and he tries to change the outcome. He tries to get a better result for himself, but he's never able to. Mm. So, so we're going, uh, yeah. yeah, you've got, well, this is a one man show. And from what I know about uh, Angus's work, it is quite poetic. But how, like, and this, this sort of madness that he's dealing with, this, um, maybe there's, there's, what I get the sense is that there is still fight in him to, to, I don't know. Is there fight in him? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think there is. His I th- desires, because uh, otherwise you kind of then there's no hope. Yes. Otherwise, what's the point? And mm. I, I think that's right. But that's where it's kind of interesting. I think is that we so desperately want it to be that way. Sort of your instinct as you talk about it now is like, but there's got to be kind of there's there must be something to kind of play for. Mm. So I, I it's what's interesting about that. I think is the way that. So we're, so we're playing with this idea that he's kind of looping over and over and over mm. and that he's never going to kind of get out of this and progress is kind of futile. And it's just, and it's kind of a pretty well-worn trope in kind of, uh, you know, narrative storytelling, this idea of being stuck in a cycle or how much do we 
write our own story? How much do we control our own destiny? Or is it sort of predetermined? Is there someone pulling the strings? And are we just kind of hardwired to have things play out a particular way? I think that's pretty like we've heard that story over and over. But I think it's particularly interesting at, at the moment when you think about it in relation to because you kind of go, oh, that's kind of f fantasy and fiction. Mm. Of course we have. Of course there's hope. Of course we have control. And I really believe that. Yeah. But it's funny when you think about what's happening in the world right now, like with you know in terms of American politics, oh, yeah. it does just seem like progress is kind of like redundant. You can spend eight years with uh, a, a socially progressive black president and mm -hmm. then you can do a hard reset to Reaganism. <laughs> you can have people in the same counties that, that voted for him uh, mm. two elections in a row all of a sudden just go back to the start. So it's kind of weird. You can't, it, some t it feels increasingly this kind of... Uh, that that's almost kind of coming into being where it's like do we not want to is there not I hope you you know for using the Obama example that's what he kind of campaigned on and yet here we are kind of like a hard reset back to the start mm. so truthfully in in this play no there's not heaps of of uh, of hope he's dead but he is of course desperately trying to change the outcome right but, you know because all those things that didn't happen for him mm. yeah is he therefore lost hope and then just gives up on life or does he kind of continue but you're doing you're saying well, he's cyclic he, he just Trump? goes he'll, <laughs> just, <laughs> he'll go back he'll have, an, go back and he'll have another go what's <laughs> what's great about it i think is that he'll he'll in the in the inside the kind of structure of the play he's he's going to keep looping but mm. also i love the fact that you know the actor's going to keep going back to the theater every night and james will try again tonight <laughs> Uh -huh. But yeah, he'll uh, uh -huh. he'll never be able to change the outcome, unfortunately. Oh dear. So what is this inner dialogue? Because I mean, I think it must be a, h a hard play to take on as a performer. Mm. I mean, and as a director, like how are you taking s what? And essentially, probably it must be going on in his mind, and then the bring it outwards on stage and yeah. perform it. Yeah. Well, I is think that I think that's right. There's a lot of kind of uh, you know him. There's, the place sort of shifts in terms of is this happening for the first time or is it kind of like a parallel reality and so yes we've had to sort of find and given the limited things we've been able to do sort of production wise mm. we've had to find kind of creative ways to be able to tell that story but that's what's really oh, fun about it. Oh because you have to work on the stage that's Yeah we there. work on the set of the shadow box uh, but I think what we've been stage, able to yeah. do is it's fairly adaptable and we've yeah. been able to make it work and our play certainly uh, shifts a lot in sort of time and space mm. um, so it hasn't you know it's been challenging but that's what's great about the piece is it's so kind of it, it's theatrical you know I, mm. I sometimes think we're, we're such a kind of uh, we're so speaking of being hardwired you know watching so much TV now we've kind of uh, oftentimes I find myself at the theatre going well, this kind of feels like I'm watching a box set or something you know but mm. this really is that it's incredibly theatrical in terms of what James is kind of doing physically and the way we've kind of had to problem solve and mm. find ways to kind of tell the story which is why we wanted to do it if you're going to do a pub if you're going to do a, a play in a pub at 10 o'clock at night <laughs> on, a, uh, on a school night <laughs> yeah. you might as well do something uh, a little bit crazy but having yeah. said that don't let that scare your listeners off because I really do think it's an extraordinarily beautiful piece and uh, uh, you'll feel something. Mm. Mm. So what are the issues that he's grappling with? Well, uh, for him, I think on the, on the surface level, it mm. seems like, as I sort of said in my spiel, like it feels like that kind of, that, that common stuff of, you know, that he's, he lives alone, he has no family, he has no money. And so I think that's what it is on a very kind Sounds of base. Like me, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> so that's definitely, I feel we all relate. We, we all right. relate to that very well. But I think that's right. It, yeah. Is is that on a kind of base level, you kind of go, oh yeah, I get, I, I get, get that. Him. I, I get that. Sure. And mm. you might be like, you might be like, uh, I get it. I feel it. But I think a lot of people will kind of go, oh, you know who doesn't feel this way mm -hmm. but I think it's the way that's kind of working uh, as a you know as an analogy I think for sort of kind of bigger ideas and it's also I think a little bit about he's grappling with you know he can't he can't sort of resist his kind of baser instincts he's being kind of undone he's trying to be a better person but he's kind of undone by his emotions mm. or his kind of rage and no matter how much he tries to kind of change that or mm -hmm. perform in a different way he can't be anything other than a particular kind of Who man yeah so it's yeah. kind of riffing on that as well that can we can we sort of perform anything other than 
a function, you know, mm. rich people, poor people, men, mm. women. I don't, that's not my personal kind of way of looking at the world, but I think that's just, but then, as I said before, when you look at the way some things are playing out in the world at the moment, you kind of go, geez, I wonder, like, yeah, well, what are we, are, are we capable of, are we, are we capable of something better? Yeah. Mm, mm. I don't know. What does the word resplendence mean? Well, and I, how does it relate to the point? Well, it's, it's, uh, I can't give you the exact definition, but you know, the resplendent sun. It's like splendid. So, yeah, bright. Splendid. Wonderful. So, yeah. Yeah, big and bright. So, so uh, mm. yeah, so where is that in the show? It's kind of the opposite of what's happening. It is. Here, isn't it? <laughs> but, Rod, you should see the pre-show. You yeah. should see the pre-show state. There should is I? a lovely <laughs> bit of, uh, a lovely bit of orange. Resplendence. Uh, LED. So, yeah, <laughs> I think. It's, I think it's working in opposition to the content of the play. Yeah. <laughs> I did read it somewhere between Taxi Driver meets Do Not Go Gentle mm. into the night. No, that's not the line. Rage against something. Rage uh, against it, uh, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think is there's. He is he raging against his world? Uh, yeah, I think there's definitely, mm. uh, definitely a bit of that, and and all at once, sort of trying. Trying not to, right, and then and not being able. Oh, to that balance of, between yeah, accepting be, and then not accepting, yeah, and not and, being able to mm. kind of keep that in check. Mm. But um, but yeah, and and you know more than that, apart from all the kind of narrative uh, hooks or, or or otherwise that are there to kind of hang yourself on as an audience, it really yeah. is one of those pieces that uh, I was I was going to say to Jamie tonight. His notes before the show were going to be uh, danger, words music and momentum mm. so the play is kind of more than like a story it, it is kind of it's an experience and a feeling and you can kind of come out the other end of it going i got this and that and i think i sort of know what that was about but it, you just kind of spent i think when it kind of works uh, when it kind of works properly so it's it's yeah it's something that kind of it's only 40 minutes mm. so it just kind of hits you like a freight train yeah. ah, and mm -hmm. then you can uh, and then you can think about it afterwards great <laughs> well we have um, tickets to give away how do we do we oh, do we do <laughs> yeah. so if you want to grab some tickets to the late show you can come just about any night right oh yeah you can the um it's it's at, uh, it's a it's a 10 p.m. show so we're on after the main show but again uh, don't be scared. It's only 40 minutes long, yeah. so we'll have you home and tucked up in bed. You can have a few beers before. You can have a few beers before. Alexa. You can bring a beer. You can bring a beer into the theatre. You can take the beer the in. Fruits, yeah. Yeah. yeah and we, so a double scotch. Any show. <laughs> the only show uh, that we're just not doing passes for is the uh, is the Sunday, 7.30 this coming Sunday. But any of the, the 10 p.m.s between now and December 10th. If you want to get some come tickets, on down, yeah. send me a message on Facebook, an email on stages at 2SER or a text message on 0410-498-671. We'll send that number over and over throughout the show if you want to grab <laughs> yourself a double pass to Resplendence at the Old Fitzroy Theatre. Were you going to say something, Rod? Yeah, I had a question. Oh, good. Please. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, I noticed, I noticed that... Uh, uh, Sammy Jane and Randy oh, yeah. are going to be playing at the Enmore Theatre this weekend, they just are. rocking up from Wodonga. Yeah. Um, so, uh, are you going to catch up with them? You, is that you know, it's funny that you say that because uh, Randy uh, actually sent me uh, sent me a text uh, yesterday saying that I want to come, and I saw his one man show recently at the Comedy Store, which was just extraordinary. Um, Randy writes a novel. And uh, I can't, I gotta go and, and watch the Resplendence uh, run on Sunday night because I'm gonna miss Friday, Saturday. But hopefully I'll get to see them uh, because uh, they're both lovely, uh, lovely fellas and we've stayed and you, great. And mates. you worked on the, the um, Ricketts, the Ricketts Pickets? Yeah, Ricketts, Ricketts Lane, Ricketts Lane yeah. With yeah, 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 it was so much thing. fun and they're, they're just the nicest guys. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there you go. That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> Nathan Lovejoy, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you so much for having me. Resplendence playing at the Old Fitzroy Theatre. Send me a, uh, an email, stages at 2ser.com. We'll put all of our stuff, all the details up on the Facebook page uh, if you want to grab yourself a double pass to see Resplendence.